Hi there, my name is Jennifer Rimback and I'm one of the school counselors at Hickson High School. Um, one of the most wonderful things that I love most, more than anything, is welcoming um, ninth graders to Hickson High. And never in my life did I think that I would be doing this from up in my house on the computer. It kind of bums me out. But anyways, it's okay, we're going to make the best of it. So the point of this video is to go over information that I normally go over um, during our um, orientation opportunities that we have each spring. So unfortunately, um, we were not able to host all of our tours that we normally plan, and I was not able to host um, our parent meeting that we normally have. Um, so this is going to cover part of that, and then I'll talk about future opportunities that we will have, um, hopefully closer to uh, school opening up. So. Sit back, grab you some popcorn. Um, something you may also want to do is grab you a pen and pencil and as things come to your mind that you might have questions about or things that might be confusing, um, you'll have my contact information soon and you will know how to reach out to me. So hopefully it won't be too confusing. So the first thing that I know uh, students and parents want to know about is kind of how does high school work? Um, you go from the world of, you know, taking your classes in elementary school and middle school, and then you just kind of get promoted every year. And sometimes you might fail something, but you still get promoted. And how does all that work in high school? Everything totally changes in high school. High school does not work like elementary school and like middle school. The important word that you need to know is credits, okay? Okay. You have to have credits to graduate. How do you get a credit? Good question. You get a credit when you pass a class. Okay, so to graduate from a Hamilton County High School, you've got to have 27 credits to graduate. That's actually going to be a new number starting next year. 27 credits, okay? And it can't just be any credits. You've got to have the right credits to meet graduation requirements, not only for the state of Tennessee, but also for Hamilton County. So our graduation requirements include four credits in English, four credits in math, three credits in science, three in social studies, two credits in the same foreign language, one credit in wellness, or two credits in JROTC. Now, wellness is kind of a mixture of health class and then also gym class. So that's wellness. And JROTC is our Air Force-based leadership and character development program. It's amazing. Okay. Then you also need to have a half credit PE, half credit personal finance, one credit in fine arts, three credits in a pathway, and I'll talk about that in a second, and then the rest of the credits are filled up by different electives that you might want to take. So everybody has to have a pathway in high school. It's one of the graduation requirements. So the way you can think of a pathway is kind of like your college major, but just on a much smaller scale, okay, because it's just three classes. So it's not that big of a deal, and I don't want you stressing over it, y'all, okay? And it is possible to change your pathways, too. So I don't want you to feel like you got to get locked into your future right now as a 14-year-old. I promise there's some flexibility there, okay? So here's our pathways that we offer at, at Hickson. Um, there's fine arts. So um, we offer pretty much almost anything you could think of. We have band, we have choir, we have a strings orchestra, we have a visual art department that is just incredible and has been nationally recognized. Um, and we also have theater classes that you can take. Um, we also have a pathway in Air Force JROTC. Um, we have a pathway in global studies, which is kind of a humanities focus. So think of classes kind of like psychology, creative writing, Bible history, um, mythology, those sorts of things. Um, then we have our institutes that I'm sure you've heard about. So our three institutes also count as a pathway. So we have institutes in agriculture, our CHI um, Health Science Institute, and we have business. And then we also have a half day um, at Sequoia Partnership that I'll talk about in just a second that can also count as a pathway. Now, some of you guys in eighth grade, um, you're going to be coming to us next year with high school credits already. So some of you guys um, that might be taking Algebra 1 or you might be taking Spanish all year long this year um, for high school credit, 
and some of you guys may be taking a half credit of PE this year. Um, so if y'all come to us with those credits and you're already going to come to us with a high school transcript, which is pretty amazing. But those are great opportunities. So if you are currently taking those classes, make sure you finish strong. OK, I know this is super hard right now, but keep plugging away. All of you guys, even if you're not taking something for high school credit, make sure you finish strong so you'll be ready to hit the ground running when you come back in August. All right, so now with the um, the partnership with uh, Sequoia High. If you might be interested in that, um, this is an opportunity for you to take like welding classes, cosmetology, wiring, construction. I mean, they've got 10 or 12 different programs to choose from. So what this would mean is you would need to apply on their website, and I've got that information down there, okay? Go to their website, scroll all the way to the bottom, and you can fill that out for those guys. Um, but basically, you would still come to Hickson in the morning on your regular bus or through the car line or however you come. And then at 7.05, so that means you got to be here on time, 7.05, you catch a bus from Hickson High School up to Sequoia High School, and then you take two classes there. One of them will be one of your vocational classes. One of them might be the career explorations class that you have to take. Um, and then you catch a bus again. You come back down to Hickson right in time for lunch. You have lunch, and then you have your last two classes of the day at Hickson High School. And so your classes that you take at Hickson would be your core academic classes, like your math, your science, your English, your social studies, those sorts of things. And your elective focus, your pathway, will be up at Sequoia. Okay, so there's something you really got to know um, if you're interested in that is in your schedule, you would not have room for anything like band or choir or ROTC or orchestra, or you can't be in an institute either. There's no room for that in your schedule. So it's either you do Sequoia or you do band or an institute or ROTC or whatever. Um, but if you do the Sequoia Partnership, you still are a Hickson High School student, of course. Um, you still get to participate in afternoon activities like pep rallies um, or play sports after school. That's still totally fine. You just won't have room for electives on campus in your schedule, if that makes sense. So if you're interested in that, reach out to Sequoia, fill out that application, okay? Now, our institutes so that I know you've heard about for sure, we've got three of them here at Hickson, okay? So our first is the CHI Memorial Institute of Healthcare and Medical Careers. Um, basically, if you're interested in any capacity in a medical career, this is the place for you, okay? Um, students that are able to go all the way through our program have the chance to sit for their CNA certificate. Um, their uh, medical assisting certificate, their personal training, certified personal training certificate. Um, it's just an incredible, incredible program. We're also getting ready, to, hopefully, to um, certify our first group of dental assistants as well. So it has three main pathways. There's the nursing, we have dental, and then we have sport and human performance. So that is for folks that might be interested in like athletic training, physical therapy, occupational therapy, um, that sort of a thing. And they also are, are talking about growing up this program even further. Uh, so we'll see what the future holds for them. Um, it's, it's amazing, incredible, incredible opportunity for kids to get some real world hands-on experience and learning, learning serious skills to help get them ready for their future. Our next institute is our Institute for Business Leaders and Owners. So if you are interested in managing or running your own business, um, if you're interested in marketing, um, accounting, I mean, anything in the business field, this is a fantastic opportunity for you. We've got a partnership with the Chick-fil-A Leadership Academy um, that many of our business uh, students also um, get to participate in, having leadership development, service learning. Um, what I love most about our Business Institute is no matter what field you end up going into after high school or after college, these guys are learning specific skills that are going to benefit them as they go out into the real world. Things like budgeting, building a resume, interview skills, how to communicate professionally. I mean, it's all so many critical, important skills. And we definitely absolutely see leaders grow out of this program. It's wonderful. Our next institute is the Institute of Integrative and Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources. That's a mouthful, so we kind of call it ag <laughs> for short. Um, basically, our, our ag pathway goes in three different directions. Um, it has animal science. If you're interested in possibly being a veterinarian or a vet tech, a an animal groomer or working um, somewhere like TWRA and working with wildlife or working on a farm, um, anything with animals, uh, working in a zoo, um, this is going to get you ready for that. We have both small and large animal science classes. Um, 
On site, we run a, a doggy daycare for teachers' dogs where they get to spend the day with us. Teachers, or excuse me, students um, work with the dogs all during the day, walk them uh, during classes. They get groomed. We've got a full grooming station um, inside our lab there. Um, we also have a pole barn outside that is home to some goats and chickens and ducks and miniature horses. So it is wonderful, absolutely hands-on experience that you can't get anywhere else around here. Um, and a lot of people think, oh, I love animals, I love dogs, sign me up. But keep this in mind, my loves. There's a lot of hard work that goes into that, okay? So you don't sign up for the animal science program just because you love dogs, okay? You got to be willing to get out there and do some do some hard work, show some elbow grease out there cleaning the stalls outside. You know, animals got to do their business, so you got to deal with that too. So there's, it's not all just playtime with animals. There's a lot of hard work with that. Um, we also have our food science, our greenhouse um, program. We grow our own lettuce at Hickson High School um, in our greenhouses. It's a hydroponic system, so that means it kind of grows in some gutter kind of looking things. We um, eat our lettuce in the cafeteria. The school system buys it back, and that money helps us run our program. Hickson Middle School also buys our lettuce. So if you're one of our Hickson Middle School students and you've had a salad, it's really bright green, pretty lettuce. It came from next door at Hickson High School. So it's really cool. Um, that is totally run by our students. They know how to maintain, manage, and harvest the lettuce. And it's just fantastic. Our third division of, of um, our ag program is our applied environmental science track. So if you're interested in um, landscaping, turf management, the outdoors, um, the, the science behind enjoying um, the outdoors, it, this is for you. We've got a um, partnership with TWR, TWRA, excuse me. We've got some land adjacent to our property that they allow us to use for that program, and it is fantastic. So if you like having class outside, you will definitely love this program. So just a few pictures. Um, I started to look through these, and I got way too many, but just to kind of give you a glimpse of our students in action. Just here, we've got you know our choir singing at Rock City. We've got some of our health science students. I think these are our CNA group. They got certified this year. We've got our goat from out back. Um, the big group picture down at the bottom with the tables is a group of our uh, Future Ready Institute ambassadors um, that were representing um, our programs at the Trade Center this year. Um, and then down on the, the bottom, right is a, a group of our art students from a few years ago. We won a nationwide um, co art competition um, from Vans, you know, shoe company. Um, we won $75,000 for our art department. It was incredible. It was a big deal. They came to town. We had a huge party. It was something our students will never, ever forget. Um, and with that, we've got a an art lab that has, um, I mean, we've got equipment for pottery. We've got kilns. We've got a digital art lab. I mean, it's just been incredible what we've been able to do with those funds and how we can help support students and their, their um, love for the arts. So it's just wonderful. Um, here, top left, we've got, this is our grooming station and our vet, vet um, science lab. Um, so a doggy getting a, a bath or again, his ears clean. I can't quite tell. Um, we've got um, some of our JROTC cadets. I believe this is our drill team and they have won the county competition, I think like five or six years in a row or something. Bottom left, we've got our orchestra. Um, they are incredible if you've never heard them before. So if you play anything, please join our orchestra. If you play violin, bass, cello, um, or viola. Um, bottom right, we've got some of our business students volunteering at the Forgotten Child Fund. Um, top left quarter, more business students. These are our Chick-fil-A Leadership Academy kids. So they've got the red shirts. They meet together once in a month and go through some leadership development um, activities. Um, bottom left, we've got our, um, our band. They're fantastic. They go to all kinds of competitions. Um, they just got brand new uniforms last year, so that was wonderful. Um, they're really, really, really good. Um, bottom right, we've got one of our um, dental assisting students showing a, a guest kind of what they do. We In our dental room, I mean, we've got all these heads with the teeth, and I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> so they're learning all about that. I love it. It's so cool. And top right, we've got um, one of our um, sport and human performance um, students, upperclassmen, going over um, an activity with some of our ninth grade institute students. So it's just so many hands-on things. It's not just sitting in the class. I mean, it's just amazing. Okay, here's some more things I forgot. Uh, top left, we've got a, a student um, working in our lettuce in the greenhouse. Uh, top right, some of our business students, um, they have designed their own business, uh, I think I believe called Cheddar Creations, where they made their cute little products and they're selling them to raise money for FBLA, which is their club. 
bottom right, we just got a sampling of some of our art. Um, we do offer um, a wide variety of art classes, all the way up to AP art, where you can take art classes um, for college credit that's re recognized pretty much across the nation. So that's really awesome. And then bottom left, of course, we're super proud of our Hickson Community Schools. Um, we were level five this year, and we look forward to more continued academic growth uh, thanks to hardworking teachers and students. So it's just awesome. So it's just a great time to be a part of the Hickson High School community. And I'm a little biased, but I think we're the best. You're going to see that too. So anyway, so there's just a little bit of the life of some of the pathways that you could, you know, get advantage, take advantage of. Of course, I didn't hit all the extracurricular activities. These are more just academic things that you can focus on. There's so much more than that. All right, so the next biggest thing you're probably wondering about is what in the world is your schedule going to look like? Well, there are two kind of high school schedules out there. There are some schools that are traditional, and that means like you're in the same class all year long, and it takes all year long to earn that credit, kind of like how your middle school schedule probably is. Or there's what we are. We're a block schedule. And what a block schedule means is you're in a less amount of classes a day but for longer periods of time, and you're only in those classes for a semester, so for half the year. So you're in a class for half of the year, and you earn that credit in that semester, okay? So we have four main academic blocks, first block, fourth block, fifth block, sixth block, and you're in those blocks for an hour and 15 minutes a day. You start the classes in August, they end in December, and you earn a credit. Then you come back in January, you're in a new set of classes, and then you work to earn your credit by the end of May. Okay, makes sense, kind of, sort of? All right. Um, so what I've got here is just a Sally student, an example lady, and we're going to go over her schedule. Okay, so this is just totally random. This is not what your schedule might look like, per se, okay, because there's all kinds of different situations and scenarios, but this is just to give you kind of an idea, and you'll get it eventually. So Sally, first block in the fall, she comes to school in August and she has got first block wellness. So that means she's in the gym part of the time and she's in health class part of the time. She's in that class until December. She passes it. Yay. She gets her credit and then she does not have wellness anymore. When she comes back in January now in the spring, she's got world history first block. Okay. So that means... She's got world history every day for an hour and 15 minutes from January to May. She passes it in May. She's done. Woohoo! Then she does not have to take world history anymore. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that SDC, besides world history, SDC stands for state dual credit. Okay? This is the opportunity, even for you as a ninth grader, if you take this in ninth grade, to earn a college credit, a free college credit, might I add while you're still in high school. Um, at the end of the semester, you'll take a challenge exam. And if you pass that challenge exam, then you're awarded a free college credit. Now, keep in mind, this credit can only be used in the state of Tennessee. And not all colleges accept state dual credit. But again, it's free. It's an opportunity. If you pass it, yay. If you don't, that's okay too. Um, so that's awesome. We have several classes in our building that are SDC, state dual credit classes, that we're really excited about those free opportunities for students to attain college credit. So moving on from first block, now Sally goes to second block. Now if you go to middle, Hickson Middle School by chance, um, our second block is kind of like your RTI block that you're used to. It's not a straight up core academic time. Um, this is for either enrichment or intervention. So if you need additional math or reading help, this is when you get it. And we'll determine that by pretests and data and all that good stuff to figure out who needs to go where. If you do not need intervention, then you go into enrichment. So enrichment might be like a a course on East Asian food and culture or an independent reading class where you share about what you're you're reading about or film studies or show choir or yearbook staff or um, competition prep for one of our clubs. You know, it's, it's enrichment time. So you'll be in either one of those. Most classes do change from semesters excuse me, semester to semester. So you might be, let's say, in East Asian food and culture in the fall, and then in the spring, you may go to the independent reading class. Um, they, they just, they switch. And so for the most part, for ninth grade, I'll kind of be sticking you somewhere, okay? <laughs> so don't be offended. I promise I do my best. But if you've got concerns, just reach out to me. But you're used to being kind of switched around anyway in middle school, so you'll be okay.
All right, so now we move on to third block, and third block is study hall or homeroom, basically. So you're in the same homeroom all year long. It meets for 20 minutes every single day. So that's where we take care of household items of business, like maybe passing out papers or having class meetings, guest speakers, that sort of a thing. So that's third block. You do not earn a credit in third block. In fourth block, so Sally has art. So she starts August, um, she starts art in August, excuse me, and then that ends in December and she passes it and she earns her credit, yay! And then when she comes back in January, she's got her science class, scientific research. It starts in January, it ends in May, she passes it, she gets her credit, yay! Okay, now fifth block, I'm going to kind of confuse you, forgive me. If you are in one of our Future Ready Institutes, we do something a little unique with your schedule, okay? Because you have something called PBLs. PBL means project-based learning. This is something you'll do every quarter with your institute classes. Um, it is an opportunity to find solutions to real world, real world, excuse me, issues that you might encounter in your field of study. Okay, so in order to do PBLs properly and to get the most benefit out of them, we cohort your institute classes and we pair them with English. So basically this means this. If you are in the health science pathway, then your first class is called health science education. That means the same kids are going to be in your health science class. They're also going to be in your English class. Y'all are going to be in those classes together. And those classes will meet every other day all year long. Okay, so this means you might have English on Mondays and then health science on Tuesdays. And then health si or English on Wednesdays, health science on Thursday. See what I mean? Excuse me, we call that an A-B schedule, um, and that's for the nature of the PBLs and other things that you need to do for the Institute. Same thing for the Ag Institute. You'll have English one day, Agri Science the next day. English one day, Agri Science the next day. Same thing for business. You'll have English one day, Intro to Business the next day. English one day, Intro to Business the next day. It's a little confusing at first, but I promise you'll get it, and your teachers will be a big help with you too. So now, six block. Um, Sally happens to have algebra. At Hickson, we do have year-long algebra. You're earning two credits. In the fall, you're earning a credit um, that basically does count as an elective. But hear me out, y'all. It's just as important as any other credit because, number one, it's a credit. You need that credit. And number two, it goes into your GPA, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then number three, it's on your transcript and colleges are gonna see it. Number four, which is probably most importantly, the concepts you're covering in part one is what's gonna help you be successful in part two. So that's, it's a very important. And we feel like we need to stretch algebra out to help our students be more successful, okay? Because it is a pretty big jump from eighth grade math to algebra one. So um, she's in part one in the fall. She passes it, she gets her credit, yay. And then she goes into part two, which starts in January. And this is your main algebra one credit. What you do in the spring is what you have to have to graduate. Okay, and then she takes it, gets her credit, woohoo, yay. Okay, now some of you guys, if you're in multiple things, like if you're in band or ROTC or choir, some of our year long programs, or if you're in an institute, you may not have room to take world history in your ninth grade year, and that is totally fine. You'll take world history your 10th grade year. Not a big deal at all. So world history, you might have, excuse me, you might have it in ninth grade, you might have it in 10th grade, doesn't matter. But English, you have every year. Math, you have every year. Science, you pretty much still have every year. Okay? All right. So now, talk about credits again, okay? In order to promote to 10th grade, you have to earn 10 credits. Basically, you have the opportunity to earn four and a half credits in the fall and four and a half credits in the spring for a total of nine credits, okay? So that means if you pass everything next year, you're going to earn nine credits, and that's what we expect, y'all. This is high school, okay? But the minimum to pass is six. If you pass to 10th grade with only six credits, then that means you were on life support, that means I had to stalk you, and that means you barely made it. Okay, so that's not being successful. You don't want to just settle for six. You want to have your nine, okay? You need 27 credits to graduate. Uh, most students graduate with 36 or more, especially if you already have credits from eighth grade, okay? The reason why you want to have more credits than what you need is so you'll have room in your schedule later on when you're a junior and a senior to do some things that are fun, like being a teacher's aide or leaving campus early to go to work-based learning or having internships. I mean, it pays to be on track, 
and you're rewarded to be on track. So that's why you don't want to settle for six. You get your nine every year and stay on track and do what you're supposed to do. If I had a, wow, it's thundering. Can y'all hear it? I don't know. <laughs> if I had a, um, an upperclassman with me right now, I can guarantee you what they would say because I hear them say it all the time. Take your ninth grade year seriously. A lot of times people think, oh, my, my senior year school is going to be what's the hardest. They'll all tell you ninth grade year is your hardest and ninth grade year is the most important year to take seriously. OK, stay serious and then you won't regret it later on. I promise. All right. Some tips about some successful ninth graders. OK, I will tell you after being around for a few years, I can tell you the number one killer of my ninth graders or any other student for that matter is attendance. Y'all, you got to be here on time and be here every day. OK, now, if you're sick, if you're throwing up, if you got a fever, if you got the coronavirus or something, then you definitely need to be home for sure. But if you just kind of don't feel good then you need to come to school, y'all, you know what I mean? If you're just like, uh, you know, um, be here because missing school a lot is kind of like a snowball. OK, it just keeps the work adds up and the snowball gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And soon you're trying to run down the hill and the snowball's chasing you and then it runs over you and it's like an avalanche. It's terrible. And you never get back up again. OK, you got to be here every day. Attendance is so crucial, y'all. OK, be here every day. I promise it's the number one killer of my ninth graders. All right. Second thing is successful ninth graders advocate for themselves. OK, now hear me out. Like I love parents. I'm a parent. I love students, moms, and dads. I love talking to moms and dads. I'm all about it. I enjoy it. But you know who I want to hear more from is you as a student. If you've got a question or you've got a concern or you have something that's just on your heart, something you don't feel right or whatever, reach out to me or reach out to your teachers, okay? You've got to advocate for yourself. Take things upon yourself because you now are a young adult, 14, 15 years old. You are a mere four years from hitting the real world. And it's time that we've got to start doing what we need to do and act like it. OK, so advocate for yourself. If you need something, you reach out. Don't depend on your mama to do your stuff. It's your stuff. You got to do it. OK, does that make sense, my loves? All right. The next one, kind of along the same lines, is successful ninth graders know the expectations and meet them without needing constant reminders. OK, guys, this is not middle school and this is not elementary school you are going to have to be on top of your stuff. And you're on top of your stuff by being here every day, by being engaged, by using the tools that are available to you, like PowerSchool or Canvas. Canvas is kind of like Google Classroom, if you're not familiar with that, if your middle school did not use it. Canvas is our online platform where a lot of your classwork will be and stuff. Successful ninth graders have goals and work to reach them. Whether your goal is to make a specific sport team or to be eligible for like Beta Club or National Honor Society or to make the clinical opportunities in health science or to make a high rank in ROTC, identify your goal and identify the steps you've got to take to make it. That's what successful ninth graders do. Successful ninth graders are involved in stuff. There is way too much to get involved with. I'll show you a list in just a second. Be involved in something. Find something that lights your fire and makes it worth coming to school every day. I promise you there is something for everybody at Hickson High School. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you're friends with. I don't care where you come from. There is something for everybody at Hickson High School. And let that be your reason for coming to school every day. And I promise you it will pay off. All right, next. Um, successful uh, ninth graders have parents that check power school often and help hold them accountable. A tidbit of information you need to know now. We do not print report cards and we do not print progress reports, okay? Because you can check PowerSchool online 24-7 and see grades. A couple of weeks into school, a letter will be sent home with your PowerSchool information if you need it. And that is the avenue that you can utilize to check grades. You can click the averages. It will open up the teacher's grade book. And then that way you can see if there's missing assignments or a low test score or something like that. And you could be involved. You can also email teachers from PowerSchool by clicking on their name. Do that. Reach out to people. Be involved. There's not a reason why no one should not be aware of what their grades are. They're online 24-7. Teachers generally update once a week. Um, some more, some less, just depending on the teacher. So PowerSchool, download it on your phone. There's an app. It's wonderful. Parents, stalk your kids on PowerSchool. It's like the best thing ever. My kids love it because I stalk them on PowerSchool. It's awesome. All right, and our last thing is don't wait to ask for help. 
if it is November and you feel like you're drowning in algebra, that's a little too late for ask for help by the end of the semester. Ask early. I can tell you tons of our teachers to after school on a regular basis, especially in our math department. Reach out for help. Take advantage of that help. But also, number one, make sure you're doing all that you can do during class in class time to remain engaged and being on top of your stuff, okay? But reach out for help. We want to help you, but you cannot dilly-dally and wait till the last semester and think that you're going to get caught up. All right, no pressure at all, but I do need you to know that the path to college or whatever post-secondary choice you want to make begins now. Now, you're not going to hear this at us from us saying like, oh gosh, everybody has to go to a four-year college. No, four-year college is not for everyone. Now, if that is your goal, if you've got a career that, that you desire to, to go into and it requires a four-year degree, absolutely, we're going to help you get there. But also, we're going to let you know about other opportunities that are out there as well, whether it is military or trade school or something like going to TCAT at Chattanooga State and learning a trade, um, or places like going to IBEW and learning how to be an electrician, or the Lineman Training Center to learn how to be a lineman. We want you to be well-versed in all of your opportunities so you can make an informed decision, okay? But if college is on your radar, you have got to know that the path to college begins now, especially if, if you're an eighth grader and you're already taking something for high school credit, you're going to come with us with a GPA already. Okay, your GPA is pretty much what determines what kind of college you can get into and what kind of financial aid you can get into. Financial aid is how you pay for college. I don't know if you've looked, y'all, but college is really expensive. Okay, and your GPA is what's going to help get you there and more importantly, help you pay for it. Okay, so GPA stands for grade point average. If you've never heard of that before, basically, it's going to take all the classes that you take each semester and it's going to average them out into an average. Okay, so a 4.0 is basically an overall A average. A 3.0 is an overall B average, 2.0 is an overall C average, 1.0 is an overall D average. Your GPA will change every semester. So it will change in January for the fall semester and then we'll change again in May after the spring semester. So it updates twice a year. So to give you an idea, okay, like let's say you want to go to UTC. They require a 2.85 GPA. So that's like an overall almost high C GPA or an 18 on the ACT score. That'll be a test that you guys will take probably starting your junior year. Or if your GPA is kind of low, like a 2.5, which is a mid C average, then they'll take that as long as you have a 21 on the ACT. So guys, being engaged early as a ninth grader, it pays off now. Because if you wait to try to improve your grades and get your averages up there, it's not going to happen. Like if I'm a senior and I've got like a 1.5 GPA, I'm not going to be able to get it up to 2.85 in order to be admitted. It's not enough time. It starts in ninth grade. You've got to take it seriously starting the first day in August when you come in our doors, okay? Um, some things I know you've probably heard about is the Hope Scholarship. So that's if you graduate high school with at least a 3.0 GPA or if you scored a 21 on the ACT test, then that's a free money you don't ever have to pay back for college as long as you're maintaining your grades in college too. So just know that there's so many opportunities for those who hit the ground running and taking your opportunities seriously. Um, community service is something you might want to think about as well. There's so many scholarships out there that are based on community service hours. So if you're ever doing something with a club or maybe your church or ROTC or anything else, write it down. It doesn't have to be fancy. You can write it down in a notebook or keep it in a spreadsheet if you like to do it that way. And then that way, a few years from now, when you're filling out scholarship um, applications, you've got a great arsenal to pull from of things that you've been doing to stay engaged and making your community a better place to live and something that can really pay off in dollars for you to go to college. So community service opportunities, here's a list. Of course, there's so much more than this. If You, you can even just Google Chattanooga Community Service and it'll, it'll come up with some more ideas for you as well. Something that's super easy that will definitely come up for you even as a ninth grader next year is opportunities in our feeder schools. Uh, places like Big Ridge or Middle Valley especially, they reach out to us all the time where they could use help running like their fall carnival or helping distribute cookie dough from a sale. Um, so just listen to the announcements um, that are given every day and you'll hear about opportunities to serve. And that's a great way to get plugged in, get to know people um, and, and just 
enjoy a great opportunity to serve others. So that's always good. Okay. Um, we have got like everything you can think of almost at Hickson High School. I Something else I did not add from last year. We've got mock trial now. I don't think I have that on there. I don't. Mock trial. Sorry. I left it off. But so many things, whether it's sports, clubs, different organizations, so many ways to get involved. If you're in one of our institutes, you'll definitely want to either consider joining FBLA, HOSA, or FFA. You'll hear about that from your institute teachers. Great way to get involved. Um, great way to serve others. All of these things are just fantastic. Um, there's something going on about every day after school and just so many opportunities. So get involved. Find something that lights your fire and gives you a reason to come to school every day. If you need help finding something that lights your fire, come talk to me and I'll give you some ideas, okay? Because I promise you there's something for everybody. All right. Our office, if um, just a little bit about what we do to support students. Yes, we build schedules, but we do a lot more than that, I promise. Okay, so if you've got uh, an issue going on at home or school and you need somebody to talk to, um, if you've got questions about the college process, um, if you've got some beef going on with a friend and you need some help, if there's some drama going on in your life, come to us. We love drama. Um, we'll help you out. <laughs> That's what we're here for. We're not going to give you solutions. We're going to help you identify solutions where you can make the best choice, you know, for your particular situation. So um, so you can kind of grow in the decision-making process. Um, so anyways, just come to us. For me, my door is always open. Um, if it's shut, which sometimes it is, if i got somebody in there, you can write your name on my whiteboard on my door. I'll be sure to get with you or you can email me. Um, that's totally fine too. I'll be happy to, to chat with you. Um, come see me in between classes one day. It's totally fine. Um, so that's, that's why we are here. Parents, we're here to support you too. If there's anything we can do to make having a high schooler, uh, a good and joyous experience for you, which it should be, um, let us know. We're here for you. Okay, so what's next? You're probably like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of information. I know it is. Um, the first thing that should be opening in May, from what I've heard, is um, online power school registration. You know, like we've started doing the past couple of years. So make sure, parents, you still register your students in power school. So we have everyone's updated demographic information and all of that good stuff. So make sure that is done, okay? Um, just listen for announcements from Health County. I'm sure they'll give a robocall or something like that when it's ready to go. Go, but make sure you do that. Um, in August, now I had to put an asterisk by it. Like, I'm hoping the world returns to normal in August, but who knows? But so anyway, that's why the asterisk is there. But the plan is on August the 10th, we'll have our orientation, our Wildcat Welcome, um, on August the 10th. You could come from 520 to 550 and come pick up your student schedule. See if you're already pre-registered with us. Now, if you'll be like brand new or you haven't registered yet, you know, your schedule may not be ready. And that's okay. Still come to orientation, though, because there's still great information. But I'm just saying, I'll try my best to have all the schedules done. But if, you know, if I don't see you in the computer, I don't see the computer. So if you got questions, you can call us starting at the end of July when we come back in the summer. Um, and then we'll have orientation starting at 6 o'clock in the gym. Again, even if you don't have a schedule already, even if you are brand new to the Hickson area, you just moved in the day before, please come to orientation. There's going to be a lot of great information. You'll be able to walk around the building, meet teachers. We'll have some institute breakout sessions so you can get more information about your specific institute. It's going to be a great grand night. You're going to love it. All right, I think we're going to have summer reading still. Um, so what you need to do is check our school website, hicksonhigh.org, by the end of the year. It'll be on there somewhere. So just remember to do that, okay, because summer reading is good. All right, next. Um, I know most of my end zone students have already received this information, and I've gotten this from the bulk of you guys, but for some reason, you have not submitted your class request to me on the Google form that I sent out. You need to do that. I mean, if you don't do that, that's fine. It just means I pick your classes for you. So I don't know if you want that or not. So if you want to pick your classes, you need to fill out the Google form and do the class request. Now, y'all, some of y'all got really excited and you fill that thing out like four or five times. You don't have to fill it out four or five times. One time is suffice, and then if you feel like you made a mistake or if you have a question, just email me and I can make a note of it. Okay, you don't have to do it four or five times, but I'm, I'm thrilled that you've enjoyed it so much. Um, that is also posted on our website if you need it. Go to hicksonhigh.org, click on news at the top, follow that next link, and you will see the class of 2024 class request link right there. If you've got questions about that, email me. 
All right, um, our student handbook is a great resource. It talks about all of our rules and guidelines and traditions. It might answer a lot more questions that you might have. It's also on our website. Go to higginsthehigh.org, click on For Students at the top, and then you will see our student handbook. You can read about dress codes, cell phone policies, you know, that sort of a thing. We are having an administrative change um, next year. Um, Dr. Ziegler will be our new principal. Mr. Sims is retiring. We're excited about Dr. Ziegler. I, I don't know if he might make some changes. I don't see widespread changes occurring, you know, but still you want to check that student handbook, especially um, in August, getting closer to school. All right, next, you want to follow us on Facebook, okay? We've got several different pages that you can utilize. Um, we've got Hicks and High School PTSA. That one is a great source of information. Um, the announcements are posted daily. Um, good news is shared. Um, it, it's a great resource. If you've got specific questions, though, still call the school directly and let us help you. Don't The PTA page is ran by moms, and they're wonderful, um, and they spend a lot of time weeding through questions that really would be best answered by just calling the school. So call us if you got a question, go to the Hickson PTSA page for announcements and for good news. <laughs> okay, and then we also have a Hickson High School counseling page as well where you can get information about like ACT, college stuff, that sort of a thing. And then we also have a Twitter. The Twitter is also kind of a source of good news. Um, you can follow us at Hickson underscore HS. So that is our social media. So give us a follow and share with your friends. <sighs> Almost done. All right. I'm sure you have more questions because if I were you, I would. <laughs> um, so you can email me or call anytime. There's my email right there. You can call the school number and it still will get connected to my home phone. So you can still do that or leave me a voicemail and I'll get back to you. But I must say my summer will be in those dates right there, May 28th through July 27th. So I prefer you not ask me then. Um, I am kind of bad and I always check my email. I wish I wouldn't, um, but I would Try to avoid those dates, <laughs> okay? And then I come back to school right after July the 27th, and that is when we will build schedules. Right now, we're not building schedules. We'll build schedules when we come back in July. I always ask questions. I love helping ninth graders. I love helping ninth grade parents. It really is one of my most favorite things to do ever. Um, for real, you will love Hickson High School. It is an amazing community. If you've never been in the building yet, I'm sad that you haven't yet, but you'll get a chance to in August. Um, it's my opinion, the best high school in Helms County, but that's just me. I'm a little biased. Um, so that's it. Um, I hope this has not been too terrible or too much torture for you. I can't imagine sitting and watching me talk for this long, but it is what it is. All right, that's all. Um, and you'll hear this a lot. As always, go Wildcats! Thank you for watching. And have a great rest of your semester, eighth graders. Congratulations on your accomplishments. Bye!